thing? They are. Okay. Well, time have arrived. I've called the meeting on the Committee on Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion to order. This committee is composed of uh, councillors Azak Tavares, Mendes, Diagostino, and myself. Uh, Councillor Mendes and Diagostino are busy with some other previously scheduled events that they have. As I mentioned the other day, this committee only meets when items come before the City Council for uh, debate or for uh, its appreciation in the sense. So since, we, uh, since its foundation, we only actually have had one item and this item has come before us. So Madam Clerk, that item, please. Would you like me to read the um, ordinance in full? Uh, yeah, sure. Okay. Item number one. Ordinance, an ordinance establishing a human rights commission in the city of Brockton. Preamble, it is the policy of the city to assure that every individual shall have equal access to and benefit from all public services to protect every individual in the enjoyment and exercise of civil rights and to encourage and bring about mutual understanding and respect among all individuals of the city. It is the goal of the Human Rights Commission to ensure that all city residents are treated fairly and equally by eliminating bigotry, discrimination, intolerance, and prejudice. Membership. The Human Rights Commission shall consist of seven members, all of whom shall be residents of the city during their term of appointment. The mayor shall appoint, subject to confirmation by the city council, persons to serve for a period of three years or until a successor is appointed and qualified. The mayor shall designate a chairperson to preside at meetings of the commission. Duties and responsibilities. The Human Rights Commission shall have as its principal responsibilities, one, to ensure that all city residents are treated fairly and equally by constantly striving to eliminate bigotry, discrimination, intolerance, and prejudice. Two, to facilitate the exchange of information to residents in the area of education, employment, economic, and business development and city services. Three, to foster enhanced partnerships between public safety departments and residents. Four, to recommend to the mayor and city council programs and services which enhance the quality of life for all residents. Five, to publish information accessible by the city's diverse communities regarding city, federal, and state grants and programs which contribute to the health, safety, and economic stability of our residents. Six, to network with community-based organizations with the goal of sharing information, awareness of city services and programs, and economic assistance to residents. Seven, the commission shall submit in February of each year to the city council an annual report detailing its activities for the prior calendar year and stating its policy recommendations and legislative recommendations to all departments, divisions, and agencies of the city, including the mayor and city council. This ordinance shall take effect 90 days after approval to allow for appointment and confirmation of members of the commission. Invited to attend, Winthrop Farwell, Jr., Councilor at Large, Jacqueline Murphy, Diversity Commission. Council Farwell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> pardon me, and members of the, uh, of the committee. Uh, I do believe we had one amendment in the Ordinance Committee which changed the title to the Commission on Human Rights, uh, Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, if I'm correct. Would That's correct. The reason why it's not reflected in what's in before you today is because that amendment has not been voted upon by the full city council. Okay. okay. So why do this? Uh, I'd like to expand from diversity, equity, and inclusion and focus on human rights. Uh, I think there are a number of different issues that the city can do better communicate with residents, get information out on important issues. I'm particularly concerned that during COVID, our current diversity, equity, and inclusion committee didn't meet. And, and I just think that there was a unique opportunity there where they could have met by Zoom and had residents join in and maybe channel information into the city as to where personal protection equipment was needed, where vaccinations were needed, where people were perhaps housebound and unable to get out to a doctor's visit. Um, a number of communities, quite a few, have changed from just diversity, equity, and inclusion to a human rights commission, including diversity, equity, and inclusion. And I'd really like to see the city do that. I hope that you will favorably recommend that to the council. Um, one of the things I did today was just check and see what some other cities in Massachusetts are doing. So, for example, in Lynn, their Human Rights Commission provides information to the public about civil rights, 
promotes public awareness of human rights issues through educational resources, works with other municipal departments to increase compliance of local, state, and federal laws, discusses human rights problems with the mayor and Lynn City Council in writing and make recommendations necessary to protect the human rights of Lynn residents, works with municipal departments and boards to raise the level of awareness and sensitivity to human rights issues in municipal business with the public, work with community agencies representing various ethnic groups in advocating human rights. You know, without getting into the national, the national political climate, if you will, uh, I think we at the local level can deliver programs, services, information at a much greater personal level in a much more comprehensive way. And you know there's an old expression, knowledge is power. And I think the more knowledge we provide to people in the city, I think that empowers them to understand their government, their city, and to benefit from what we have to offer as well as recommend offerings that perhaps we haven't thought of because none of us has a corner on good thought. There are many people out in the community who have ideas and suggestions that would be very worthwhile for us to consider. So without belaboring the point, that's where we are. This was referred to you by a vote of the ordinance uh, by the city council. And uh, here we are. I'd be happy to answer any questions if you have any. Yeah, thank you, uh, Councillor. Um uh, Council Tavares, you move over this way so you're a little closer to the rest of us. Go ahead, ma'am. Um, thank you, Councillor. Thank you for bringing this forward. So I just, um, I'm all in support of, we voted on changing the name, which I think will, is very important, which um, is where we are today. It mirrors where, you know, the human rights is, um, is huge, so I'm glad that's in the title of this uh, committee. But um, I just have one question which I may, I just want to hear your points, you know, your views on this. But um, where it states that the chairperson to preside at the meeting will be designated by the mayor. I believe most of our boards and commissions, the chair is um, voted on by the committee. So I, that's the only thing that concerned me is if the, you know, if the committee should vote on their chair or if it should be by the mayor? I don't know if that's how it is in, in Lynn. Is this? I, I don't know where it is. I'll tell you why I did that, Councillor. It's because the mayor designates the chairman of the license commission. Okay. And it would be my hope that the mayor will designate someone and have periodic meetings, feel comfortable, and exchange information with that person. So I wanted to give the chief executive officer, whomever he or she may be, the opportunity to say, I'd like to have that person serve as chairperson because we're really going to network and go back and forth on issues, exchange information. I don't really have a strong feeling either I, way. I don't either. I was just wondering, uh, you know, but where. Again, it was just was. modeled after the, the license commission. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor uh, Basically, like, you know, I think that was a, such a great idea, uh, you know, uh, human rights, like you said, um, especially during the COVID, like, you know, uh, is a lot of lack of the communication between uh, the city and uh, our community. I think that is a, such a great idea, and, and I'm such a uh, believe in human rights. Uh, you know, I uh, definitely am in favor and support this. Well, I, I hope what will happen, Councillor, is that we'll share information, support community-based groups when they apply for grants or have an interest in setting up a particular program. Um, you know, we're not Washington, but I do sometimes feel isolated that we get so embroiled in the issues that come before the council, we forget that there are a lot of neighborhood and community issues that we'd like to know more about and we'd like to be supportive. And I hope this would be a conduit to, to see that happen. I agree, um, and I think it, you know, this committee should be viewed as a blank canvas in a sense, you know, that the sky is the limit. I mean, they can take, go beyond what's in here and basically bring forward, and perhaps that's what we should add, is to bring forward issues as they see fit. You know how yes. when you're applying, I mean, when you actually have a job description, usually it says, and to do, conduct other work as from time to time, uh, brought forward in the sense. So I think we should just add that line in there and conduct other business as they see fit. I, I, Councillor, I agree because there are so many things that can pop up and they need immediate attention. 
And rather than file a resolve, have it read, have it sent to FinCom, I have it sent somewhere, why not have a commission that can actually be proactive when something arises that really needs immediate attention. So if, uh, if you send that back to the council as a recommendation, I would certainly make a motion to include whatever appropriate wording you and legislative well, other duties council. as they see fit Absolutely. from time to time. Yep. You don't think that's? Yes, so should we make that amendment here, Attorney Resnick? You can make a recommendation for us, right? Yep. That way it can go back to the council, okay? okay. So um, what was the wording as seen? Perform other duties as they... As appropriate? As appropriate. Or, or as, as it arises from time to time. Yep. As they arise from time to time. And I, and I would suggest to the three of you as my colleagues, we should ask the mayor uh, if this gets through the council and is approved, we should ask the mayor to give them a small appropriation because there are materials that should be printed and, you know, information that should be disseminated and that, that will take not a lot of money but certainly some money to get out into the community. Well, I believe there's about $3,000 $3, on, uh, on the budget for the diversity committee. Um, Good. And there's nothing wrong with rolling that over into this particular committee since it's now uh, taking over its duties and obligations in a sense. And I would hope... Uh, Mr. Chairman, that some of the current members of the Diversity Commission are appointed to this. Yep. Some may not be, but some should be, and I think they have a lot to contribute. I honestly, I honestly believe that, you know, and I think you're absolutely right with the, with the entire COVID uh, experience in a sense. You know, this community was basically locked down as the whole country was, and I think we should have had uh, folks to, that met on the regular basis to see what's going on to take the temperature of the community and find out exactly what's going on in the community. And I think it's important for us to do that. I agree. I agree. Uh, I thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Especially uh, for the Council. quorum, uh, Councillor Tavares. I thank, thank you. you. Any other questions, concerns, issues? You want to make a motion well, so, that we add that? Yes, yeah, so I'll make a motion Second. to add. Yep. Thank you. To perform other duties as they are. Um, as they arise. They are, as as they arise from time to time. Got it. Motion has been properly made and second. All those in favor? All those opposed? Okay. It carries. Now, can we, uh, having no further discussion on this, can we have a motion to uh, recommend uh, this particular item uh, to the entire city council yes. as amended? Mm -hmm. I motion to, uh, um, to send this favorably back to the full city council uh, as amended. Seconded. Now, uh, Madam Clerk, do we put the name change into the amendment as well? It'll already come up before the full city council but if we it make came this, through ordinance. But if we get this through uh, the recommendation of the committee, wouldn't that be a little more so we don't have to make a, make a motion to accept the we'll amendment? We'll combine them when it comes to the council. Okay. You'll combine them, okay. All right. You make you have a to motion. vote. Yeah. yeah. Second. Second. Uh, Having a, a motion made and properly second, all those in favor? All those opposed? It carries. Uh, do we have anything else that we need to discuss? I don't believe so. I make a motion to adjourn. Uh, second. A motion to adjourn has been properly made and second. All those in favor of adjournment? All those opposed? Thank and you. we are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.